getting BGP neighborships up and running is good. Also, of course, making sure it advertises networks is good. But when it comes down to the routing table, interpreting that can be a bit more challenging. Let's find out more next on my CCIE journey. Before we get started on that, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as hit the bell for notifications as we continue on on my CCIE journey. Now, let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that's actually very challenging, of course, is that BGP routing table. Most of us that have come from the CCNA or CCNP side, we've already gone ahead and taken the time over the years, right, to ensure that we understand the idea of doing the show IP route. So this is the routing table that we're constantly looking at and that we're used to looking at as well. And when we start seeing it, we see all the information that we've actually kind of studied over the time and over the years, and we feel good at interpreting that. But once we get into BGP, this now becomes a little bit more challenging. When I do a show IP BGP, that will show now something a little bit different, but this is the BGP routing table. And all of a sudden I start realizing I get status codes and origin codes as well as RPKI validation codes that are also there too. And now my routing table looks a lot different. Now, the unusual thing about this is that not every single routing table inside of BGP will also look the same. Now, don't get me wrong, the format's the same. We still have that network command and we still have that network uh, column at the top, next top, metric, local pref, weight, path, you name it, that's still there. But notice on the left-hand side, we actually have a column that seems to be, well, unnamed at all, okay? But yet, there are some symbols and there are things there for interpreting too. So when I first started actually getting BGP set up after my long time away of not studying it, I found it a little bit challenging at interpreting this information. But when it comes down to the CCIE lab exam, this is something that should not be a challenge to you about understanding what is happening here and what it shows you. As you start entering in everything that you need to configure BGP, everything comes together, but then you can get different output and interpretation. And the only way to really see that if everything's working the way that you want to or not is gonna be right here in this BGP routing table. So we wanna take some time to show you some of the differences so that you actually understand what we're seeing here. First and foremost, let's start talking at the top, which is fairly simple. Right here, I see that on router one, I have a path that actually is marked with an asterisk as well as the greater than symbol. And we, of course, can go ahead and see that that actually tells us exactly what we want, that this is the valid and best path. Now, sometimes you also see it written a little bit differently as well, in which you can see other things are also in here such as the R and then the greater than symbol. And you notice that that one is the one that actually begins to alarm us here too, because that lowercase r means rib failure. And if you haven't been studying BGP in a while, you automatically start to kind of fall back on what you know in CCNP or CCNA, a failure is a bad sign. But in BGP, it doesn't definitely have to be a bad sign. It just means that it actually got in here a different way than using BGP. So it actually does show up, but it actually is different in that sense. Now, along with that, of course, we'll actually see some other ones that we'll go through as we go through this episode to make sure that we understand as well. Now, of course, all these different routes that we actually see also have a next hop. Now, all of them actually seem to be okay. When we get to this, we actually understand that there's a hop this way over here, and there's another direction right here as well. But then looking at it again after a long time away, or maybe this is your first time really jumping into it, the next top of all zeros sounds like a default gateway when we come from that original routing table. Well, that's not what this one means here. When we see something like this, this actually ends up telling us that, hey, this originated at my own local router itself. So we'll see that information too. From that point, all of these, uh, beginning with next top, going through metric, local pref, weight, and path, all these are the BGP attributes that we really need to make sure that we have a good deep dive into as we continue on. Notice that we have a weight in one column of 72, uh, uh, 32, 768, and then zero, 
But notice also in the path, it looks like that there's a few different marks here too that we see such as a lowercase i and a question mark. We see an autonomous system number and an i beside it. We see an autonomous system number and also a question mark beside it as well. And all those are actually gonna be interpreted a little bit differently. Now, when we start seeing this, this is where it gets confusing in the table as well. I have a lowercase i over here on the left-hand side, but under path, I also have, well, lowercase i's over here, and that makes it a little bit difficult to interpret of whether this actually means that it's an internal route or whether this actually means that it actually is the origin code as well. How do we know which one is actually which? When you're confused about this, the easiest way that I actually kind of made sure that I understood this, and that probably wouldn't be on the exam, but actually is helpful for you, is when you look on the right-hand side underneath path, the origin code is all about where the path originates, right? IGP or EGP here, or incomplete. Well, if you notice that this side is actually incomplete, which means that this I is probably gonna come from this origin code right here, okay? So make sure you kind of understand and are able to interpret things like that as well. Now, when we start to see this, here's some unusual things that you actually learned as well. E, you probably will not see anymore because that actually doesn't represent BGP. It actually represents the older EGP, the actual external gateway protocol. So we're probably not gonna ever see an E in that code over there under path. I doesn't necessarily mean an internal uh, gateway protocol either. It actually just kind of tells you, hey, look, this is actually happening internally as well. So we're actually seeing that too. So it's not really associated with the idea of some type of RIP or OSP route or EIGRP, you name it, it's probably not that. The one that generally throws us when we come from the CCNA, CCNP side of things, it's gonna be the question mark, okay? The question mark's a little bit harder for us if we have the CCNA level because we might not have gone into the realm of redistribution, of actually learning that route from another particular routing protocol. So in this one, this is either gonna be OSPF or EIGRP that has now been redistributed into BGP itself. So that is just one example and some of the different things that we'll actually see here too. Also notice that we have some different numbers under metric. So just realize you want to make sure that you will pay attention there. Let me show you some of the other values that we'll also end up seeing over time uh, too. So now we actually see on router two, notice the path has now begun to change for a few of them. And we start to see here are some other things that are going on. Here's the example that I want to show. Notice that I have a route to 5.5.5 .5 .5 but it's actually two different routes. Both of them are entered into the routing table, but in terms of actually what which route will get selected, it's going to be the one that has that valid and best. Notice the I here tells you it's going to originate from this IGP here uh, too, and tells me my next top, the metric, and then also the AS path as well. So we will see that we have one that actually has one AS path along the hop, and then there's actually one that has two hops along the AS path to get us there too. All right, so that one is actually relatively uh, easy. Uh, here's another one that has more of these. So this is more like uh, what we saw in router one. Over here on router four, this one is actually a little bit more interesting. On the lower left-hand corner side, all of a sudden we start seeing like an S. And now I have to actually go back and start seeing suppressed, well, what the heck does that actually mean? And not only do we have something like that, but we have it with a question mark that's also here. So you have to make sure that you take some time and go through and do that. And of course, as you're studying BGP, you'll learn all about these things, but just make sure you pay attention to some of the different conditions that you'll see. And you'll notice that all these are actually locally originated as well. We even see, for example, Right here, something a little bit stranger, which is going to be this particular marking. 172.16.0.0 with a slash 22. That is gonna be a summarized route of all of the routes that we see, such as the one, the two, the three, all those have actually been summarized. But these, even though they're suppressed, they're showing up in the routing table as well. So what does that mean? Once again, this is why understanding the BGP routing table 
is going to be very helpful for you as you continue on in your studies. Here's another particular view, and this is where it gets more interesting as we start seeing well, more autonomous system numbers come in. We start seeing multiple paths along the way, and now sometimes notice that there's a metric that shows up and then there's a metric that doesn't show up as well. And you, so you start to actually kind of understand that interpretation a little bit more as you uh, continue in your studies. And finally on router six, we see the two major paths here from router six going to just about everything else inside of our network. And it has those two main points uh, in terms of the next hop. It's gonna go in one direction or another direction from router six. Well, let's just take that as an interpretive point here. So on router six, it's saying that I can get to the 2.2 network if I go along this path up here, or if I go along the other path as well. And this is a great point for you to actually start to study your BGP attributes as you actually say, hey, what can I manipulate at this point to make that change if I want to? Well, there's plenty of more information that you can actually learn, but it takes time and it takes a little bit of challenge for you to try things that will break this thing to make it work. But here's a key point though, even though this particular routing table is actually uh, key for us to understand, remember that these routes do not appear if I don't get them, oops, I've somehow actually opened a browser here, if I do not get them, first of all, in the routing table itself. So if they're not actually showing up here, they're probably not gonna actually be in your routing table inside of the BGP routing table as well. Well, hopefully that's enough to at least get you challenged to make sure that you take the time that you need to, to explore that BGP routing table, because that's gonna really help you as you do troubleshooting as you need to on your CCIE lab exam. Well, there's plenty of more for us to go through, but we'll see you on the very next episode.